to my YouTube channel Physics by Physicist. So in today's lecture, we will learn about the Green function. So guys, this uh, Green function is very important from the exam point of view for the students who are preparing for CSI Net Physical Science exam. As the question from this topic is generally asked for five marks, and this Green function is very e very easy actually. So we will basically discuss two method to solve this Green function. So our first method is Rongxian method. So let's see how we can solve the Green function for any particular differential equation using this method. So the question is we have to find the Green function for this differential equation, and these are the boundary condition which they had given to us. So let's see step by step how we can solve this question. So our step number one is to convert the non-homogeneous differential equation into the homogeneous differential equation. That means if you are having any term on the right hand side of the differential equation then convert it into a homogeneous differential equation form means you have to uh, remove all the terms on the right hand side with zero and this will give you a homogeneous differential equation as in our question the form of the differential equation is already homogeneous so we need not to do anything with this so we will keep this equation as it is now the second step is find the general solution now for any differential equation how we solve this general equation is let's see uh, consider y equals to e raised to the power mx now when i will differentiate on both side so it will give me dy by dx equals e raised to the power mx and m due to the power term mx now e raised to the power mx is nothing but our y so i can replace it with y m okay now again differentiating on both side this will gives us d2y by dx square equals dy by dx into m now our dy by dx is already y m so i can write it as m square y now i will put this value in this equation so it will give me m square y equals 0 and since we know that y is not equal to 0 this implies that m square equals to 0 that means our two roots are equal and their values are 0 0 so for this case the complementary function or we can say the general solution of any differential equation is given by the form of c1 plus c2 x bracket e raised to the power mx here this is our m1 first root and this is our m2 second root but since these are equal so we can consider that m as m okay now this will be our solution so let's see what it will gives us so c1 as it is plus c2x as it is and our e raised to the power 0x that will give us 1 so we can write the general solution for this differential equation is c1 plus c2x so now the third step is we have to use the boundary condition and we have to find this u1x u1-x u1t u2x u2-x and u2t now let's see what are these variables so when i will use the first boundary condition that means when x equals 0 the value of y is also 0 and we have we can write our y value on the right hand side here it is c1 plus c2x okay now applying the first boundary condition when x equals to 0 y is also equal to 0 so this equation will gives us 0 here equals c1 plus c2 into 0 this implies c1 is equals to 0 okay now when I will put this value of c1 equals to 0 here so it will give me u1x which is c2x as our c1 value is 0 now from here we can calculate u1 dash x which is the differential of u1 so it will be c2 and if I convert I replace this x variable with any t variable then it will give me u1 t which will be c2 t okay now these three way i have find out now the remaining will be find out from this 
second boundary condition so let's see what it is so the second boundary condition says that when the value of x is equal to a our differential of y is zero so for first we have to find the differential of y so the differential of y here is c1 is as a constant so its differential would be zero plus c2x differential of c2x will give me c2 so the differential of y is c2 now put this boundary condition in this equation so it will give us y dash value is zero when x is equal to a but as there is no x term in our this equation so this implies that our c2 value is zero now if i will put this c2 value again in this equation then this will give me u2x so u2x equals to c1 and since the value of c2 is zero so u2x is c1 only u2 dash is zero because there is no x term here and u2t will be c1 only because there is also not x term now the next step is we have to find this gaussian value and this is calculated by the determinant of u1 x u2 x and u1 dash x and u2 dash x so now the thing is we have to just put the values of all u1 x is our c2 x okay so c2 x u2 x is our c1 so it will be c1 u1 dash x u1 dash x is our c2 so it will be c2 and u2 dash x is our 0 so here I will write 0 now solve this determinant to get the value of w here so as you can see that multiplying this term with 0 with this that will gives us 0 and then negative sign and then multiply c1 by c2 that will give us c1 c2 so the value of function will be c1 c2 with negative sign so guys and here comes our last step we will find our green function by using this formula so u1x u2t divided by pw will give us the green function for the range x less than t and u2x u1t divided by pw will give us the green function value for the range x greater than t now here we have calculated u2x u1t u1x u2t and w but what is our here p so guys p is nothing but the the we can say the coefficient of d2y by dx2 whatever it will be so it will be our p value since here there is nothing so we can say here the value of p is 1 so now we will place all the values in this equation so find to find the green function for this differential equation so let's put all the value so u1x u1x is our c2x c2 x and u2 t u2 t is our c1 so i can write here c1 divide by p is our 1 and w is our minus c1 c2 okay i can put negative sign here then c1 and c2 similarly here u2 x u2 x is our c1 and u1 t u1 t here it is our c2 t and then p here is 1 and the value of w is c1 c2 so after solving this we will find that the green function will be here c1 and c2 will get cancelled and here also it will get cancelled so the green function would be minus x for the range x less than t and it would be minus t for the range as greater than t so guys uh, these are the stepwise solution for this uh, green function question so in all the question whenever you are asked to find the green function and if you are using the wrong method so these are the 
five step you you have to use to solve this differential equation to find the green function for any differential equation now let's see another example based on this wrong sign function to calculate the green function of any differential equation so guys here is the next question and uh, we have to find the green function for this given differential equation and these are the boundary conditions so the first step was first is to convert the non homogeneous differential equation into a homogeneous differential equation so as you can see that here the differential equation is non homogeneous so first we will convert it into a dif homogeneous differential equation so d2y by dx square plus y equals to 0 is our homogeneous differential equation for this equation so now again we have to find the general solution for this differential equation so similarly in the, the previous question uh, take y equals to e raised to the power mx then you will find a differential uh, quadratic equation so here also dy by dx will be equals to e raised to the power mx into m which is our my again d2y by dx square will gives us m square y so we'll put it here so this will give us m square y plus y equals 0 we'll take y as common so m square plus 1 y equals to 0 since uh, y is not equal to 0 that means m square plus 1 is equal to 0 or m square equal to minus 1 take this one on the right hand side and then it will give us the value of m as plus minus i so these are the two root of this differential equation sorry of this quadratic equation so uh, when the roots are you can say the complex conjugate of each other complex conjugate conjugate of each other as in here so consider that our for general case if our roots are a plus i beta alpha plus i beta so the general solution for that is given by e raised to the power alpha x bracket a cos beta x plus b sin beta x okay now here you can see that there is no real part here that means our alpha is zero here and for the coefficient of i here beta is also one so from this equation i can write the general solution as a cos x plus b sin x now in step three we will use this boundary condition so the first boundary condition says when x equals to zero y is also zero so put it here so when y is zero when x is zero so a cos zero plus b sin zero so since sin zero is zero so this term would vanish and a cos zero is one so our a value is equal to zero from here so we will get means u1 x equals to b sin x if i would find the differential of this u1 that means u1 dash x equals to b cos x and u1 t will be given as replacing x by t so b sin t will be our u1 t now uh, the second boundary condition means when x equals to pi by 2 the value of y is 0 so put this boundary condition in this equation so x equals to pi by 2 so a cos pi by 2 plus b sin pi by 2 and the value of y is 0 so since cos pi by 2 is 0 so this term will vanish so and since pi sin pi by 2 is 1 so b is equals to 0 so now when put we will put this value of b in this equation so that will give us u2x equals to a cos x u2 dash x 
equals to minus a sin x and u2 t will be equal to a cos t. Now in step 4 we will calculate the value of w which is our Rongian. So its value is given by the determinant of u1x, u1 dash x, u2x and u2 dash x. So we will put all the values here u1x is our b sin x. So b sin x u1 dash x is our b cos x so b cos x u2 x is our a cos x so a cos x and u2 dash x is our minus a sin x minus a sin x so when we will solve this determinant here so that will give us minus a b sin square x and minus a b cos square x so from here we can take minus a b common so minus a b common and sin square x plus cos square x that is our 1 so our value of w is minus a b so guys in the next or in the last step we will find the green function by putting the values of all these variables here so u1x is our b sin x so b sin x u2t is our a cos t a cos t divide by p and since we know that the coefficient of d2y by dx square is our p and here is no uh, no coefficient then we can take the p as 1 so we will write it as 1 and the value of w is our minus ab minus ab similarly for the range x greater than t we will put all the values so u2x is our a cos x so a cos x u1t is our b sin t so b sin of t and then value of divided by p and minus ab so from here the b and a will be cancel out here also so overall the green function that we will get for the range x less than t will be minus sin x cos t and minus cos x sin t for the range x greater than t so guys this is our green function for this differential equation so so guys in this way we can find out the green function for any of the differential equation so i hope that you have liked the video so please press the like button and also share the video among your friends and if you are new to this channel so do subscribe this channel and in the next video we will learn the second method to find the green function for the differential equation so till then take care bye bye